Come to prayer with me this morning. Embracing and loving God, we thank you for bringing us together once again this morning. Be with those that are here and those that are not with us, but be with us as we share and be that true spirit of Christ within each of us. Let us be those gifts to one another and through your guidance, let us take that time in opening our hearts this morning, but ever more opening our minds so we may be the receptors of the words that are about to be spoken. I ask now that you would touch my lips of clay and mold them into the words that need to be spoken and the words that come from my mouth along with all the meditations on each and every one of our hearts. May they ever be acceptable to you. In Christ we pray. Amen. So did you know that there is power in your words? And most importantly that in life we need excuse me, to choose our words wisely. So this morning I encourage you to think about what you say as you choose those words wisely and what a difference it will make in our lives. I'm excited this morning because over the next four weeks we are going to engage in this new sermon series called The Four Agreements based on Don Miguel Ruiz's book, The Four Agreements. And I'm very excited to have the opportunity as we share because whether you're familiar with them or not, they are the first and engaging things that should be part of your life. And these four ingredients are quite profound. But bear in mind that these agreements are not coming from scripture. But knowing that at the same time, God speaks to us in so many different ways, and it's not always from Scripture. It may come from other aspects. So let's dwell, delve into these agreements, and I'm excited to tell you that, do my little small sales pitch, if you still want to get the book, The Four Agreements, um, you can still get it on Amazon um, to follow along over the next four weeks. It's still either on audio or paperback. I think it's a hard book, but you want the paperback, it's like under eight bucks. And if you have Amazon Prime, there's no shipping. And of course, then that money again, whatever you do, if you do your Amazon Smile, comes back to the church. See, it's a it's a win-win as always. But um, but just thought I'd throw that little plug in. But um, and not a bad book to also have in your own personal library. But while I was doing my clergy internship years back, I learned about Don Miguel's book the Four Agreements, and other books from the pastor that I was doing my internship with at the church, and it was at uh, Metropolitan Community Church in San Diego. And they were launching this series back then, and I kind of became intrigued with it and followed the series. I got the book, and um, it just um, hit me. And then just last week while I was in Dallas, um, I got to meet with some other colleagues that I um, know there, other than Reverend Neal, believe it or not. I do know other people in Dallas. But I was having coffee with a former colleague who just loves this book and loves the work of uh, Ruiz and was sharing with me that he was a little jealous that I was doing this series starting this week here in Milwaukee because he couldn't be here to be a part of it. But at the same time said, your congregation will fall in love with it, or I hope they will. And I hope you do. Um, when Ruiz's books were shared with me, um, I began to delve a little bit more into his writings, but this book struck me, and I do try to maintain my life by living these agreements. You know, it's not always that easy, but I constantly remind myself to be impeccable with my word and to not make assumptions, and at the same time, I don't take things too personally, and the biggest thing is that I try to do my best. So let's take a look at these four for a moment. I think I have a slide. I hope it's in there. Here we go. So the four agreements that Ruiz tells us is to be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. Huh, okay. And always do your best. We're going to have some fun over the next four weeks with these, I think, I hope. So let's look at the first one. 
and hopefully there's another slide, or there will be. <coughs> there we go. Be impeccable with your word. Ruiz fluffs this up in the book and says that speak with integrity. Say only what you mean and avoid using words that speak negatively about yourself. <coughs> Gotta think about that one, right? Or to not gossip about others. Now that's a big one, because we all sure do a lot of that, don't we? And use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. Be impeccable with your word. Now, the word impeccable isn't one of those words that just flips off our tongue and, you know, a word that we frequently use in our vocabulary, unless you just happen to stop by one of these fabulous mansions on the east side of town and have just gone through a tour or something and you walk out and just say, wow, that home was impeccable. Or that you just came from this great fundraising event and that you are all decked out to the nines and whatever and you're like, admiring everybody else's clothing and you just kind of say, wow, he or she was just impeccably dressed. Again, not one of those words that just flies off of your mouth, right? And if you look at it, the word impeccable actually is taken from the Latin, which is uh, peccatus, if I'm, saying, if I'm saying that right, which actually translates to sin. And if you put the in, in put the I am in for it, um, it is another standing of saying I am stands for, the M stands for without. So you're looking at without sin. I mean, if you look at the definition of flawless, it usually means, I mean, impeccable, it usually means flawless or there's no blemishes or it's perfect like a diamond. But again, we don't use that word impeccable so much in our, in our um, vocabulary. And letting out our words to be without, you know, we need to let them out without causing them to be harmful. Or as it says, being without sin. Speak with integrity. Let those words that come out of your mouth be driven by the truth and honesty. And, you know, let those words that come out be reliable from your mouth. Let them be truthful and let them be upholding. Something that we all sometimes have problems with. It's like, let's really be, you know, say what's on your mind, but let's be truthful. But at the same time, don't always have that same intent of thinking that it's all going to come out. But have that intent that when they do come out that you don't want them to be harmful or you want them to be words of encouragement or you want them to be taken in a context of progression or constructiveness. Um, you know, sometimes even a mere compliment that we give, we think that maybe endearing or something that is positive to somebody is taken the wrong way. Sometimes people will take that as being patronizing or pacifying or you're just trying to get on their good side or something like that. But, you know, as hard as we try to correct these words, sometimes it sadly causes more harm than good. It seems sometimes we just don't get those words right. And I can tell you, I've had those days where words have come out of my mouth and it's like, okay, I think I said the right thing. And the next thing you know, you're getting bombarded either with emails or you're getting bombarded with bullets or something that, oh my God, what did I just say? And you go back and it's like, oh, well, okay, maybe it was, you know, I used the word impact and intent. Your intent wasn't what the impact ended up being. As children, I'm sure most of you have heard this, but when we were little, we learned this phrase that Sticks and stones may break my bones, and words will never harm me. Now, who in the heck ever taught us that? Because that should be like, oh my God, words do harm us. Now, can someone just please tell me how we learned that phrase? Because we know that words in our lives can be hurtful. And I don't care what anyone says, 
We have all used those words in our lives, and we still do. It's just part of our DNA that sometimes the wrong words come out. But I think the key question is, what words are you holding on to? What words are the wrong words? And are those words continually clinging on to you that are negative? Or are they words that cling on to you that are positive and encouraging and can be productive or uplifting or even complimentary to another individual? Or if you're holding on to those worms, words, she's not worms, but words <laughs> that are harmful or hurtful, that we continue to play those words over and over in our head. And constantly, if we keep doing that, it starts creating this negativity, negativity within us. We start getting down on ourselves. We start losing our esteem. And sooner or later, it starts rubbing off on your neighbor. They see that negativity in you, and it become, becomes that, oh, well, I don't want to really be next to that person. They're kind of giving up those negative vibes. They're not talking positive. Did you know that the word is the most powerful thing in our life? And did you know that that powerfulness is just having a double-edged sword? Having the word or having vocabulary or whatever you want to define it as is like having a double-edged sword. Words in our lives can either create or they can destroy. So looking at this double-edged sword in this way, that one edge of the sword can be the words that we misuse or even control or even manip manipulate things in our lives. And then you end up with this result that tears apart all these walls and starts destroying whatever connections you've made in life. And then there's the opposite side of the sword, where you have that impeccability of our words. Now remember, we derived that impeccable, somewhat defined as flawless or even unblemished. So think of those flawless words in your life, like marvelous and fabulous and all those things. If you go into the Bible and go into Proverbs, you know, Thank God for Proverbs. Sometimes they have some of those wonderful sayings. But if you go into Proverbs, there's a portion in Proverbs 12 that says, Sharp words cut like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Lips that speak the truth are forever, and lying lips are infirmal. Profound words. Got to like that, Proverbs but keep in mind that both ends of these swords are sharp and that both ends can be powerful. The words that you could use could set you free or the words could enslave you for an eternity. Think back for a moment to when you were a child or even a teenager or, okay, we'll go as far as college maybe, but go back a little bit further. And I only say that because we're most impressionable when we're younger. Usually by the time you hit college, you've already got, you're set in your way, so those words are already there. But as much as we think about it, think back to somebody that maybe you admired or somebody that was important in your life. And was there ever a time, not intentionally, not purposefully, that that person might have said something negative to you. Like, oh, you can't do that. You're not skilled enough. Or, yeah, you're not old enough to do that. So don't even think about it. Or, you're too short to be on the basketball team. <laughs> or whatever. Or the way you swing that bat, it's like, oh, forget about baseball. Or the way you pound those piano keys, oh my God, we should just put the lid on those fingers now. 
And I'm not referring to Jeff because Jeff plays very well. <laughs> I'm talking about myself. But, um, but those things sit in you. Those phrases are words that stick with you and they resonate, resonate that negativity that sometimes still lives with you as a person. I know for me that when you compliment or you hear those complimenting phrases, there's, they're phrases of encouragement. It would be like if someone said to you, that's a smoking hot dress you're wearing today, or wow, that is one fabulous shirt you've got on, or I just love that hairstyle. Who cut your hair? Those compliments sometimes are not as easily received as they are given. I know for me that I sometimes have to look behind or over my shoulder when I get complimented because I'm not used to it. I'm used to the giving, but being at the receiving end of good is one of the most difficult things a person can do, especially when it's complimentary words. I know most of us here are the type that would give compliments and share those positive and constructive things with others, but are you that person that when it's given to you in reverse, it's kind of like, oh, okay, I don't know how to take that. Or, oh, okay, well, maybe, I guess they're right. I guess maybe I look good in that outfit or, you know, or that haircut looks good. You start doubting yourself because receiving is the hardest thing in life to have. But let me tell you, get over it. Because you know what? You are impeccable. You know, those impeccable words that you just give out to other people, you better start learning to take it right back in return because you are impeccable, because you're impeccable because you're giving those compliments at the same way. There is power in your words. And when a person pays you a compliment, just turn to them and say, well, thank you. Or the same to you. Own that compliment instead of hiding behind the bush. <coughs> you know, as individuals, we place such huge values on other people in our lives. And even body expressions can interpret a different set of words or meanings. I mean, if I stood there like this and gave you a frown, you would just look at me like, oh, okay, what's going on with the pastor this morning? <laughs> our body actions are words just as well as our spoken words. Versus if my arms were wide open and, and welcoming you, that would give you a different impact or impression of words. You know, and as we get older, sad to say we're getting older, a lot of us have hung on to these words in our lives that have been the things that have molded us. And some of them have not been great words in our lives, right? But we need to learn to let go. Or as they say, was it the, the Disney movie, Let It Go? I'm not gonna sing it, no, don't worry. <laughs> but next week. <laughs> But those words are powerful. Remember, speak with integrity in your life. Even though you may not think you have that integrity, you do. But speak with that integrity. And at the same time, avoid those words that are the powerful words that speak of negative, that are blemished, that aren't the perfect diamond in the rough and avoid speaking against yourself. I can't tell you how many people I run into will find something wrong with themselves before they find something good with themselves. Get that notion out of your head. There's nothing wrong with any of us. Okay, well, there might be, but we don't, need to, we don't need to sit there and take inventory of it. Take inventory of the good things in your life. Keep that positive attitude and those words will con continually bring that esteem into your life. When I was a kid, okay, a few years back, many years back, there was a story that 
the kids all used to hear. Now, I'm going to really date myself, and probably some of you will date back with me, but dating back 45 plus years ago, maybe more, maybe 50, we used to hear the story of Thomas the Engine. And if it's the same story as Thomas the Engine that I'm going to say, because there's different Thomas the Engine stories, but Thomas was this little, little engine in the train yard. And all these other powerful steam engines were in the train yard too and were having all these railroad cars on there and going one direction and going the other. And Thomas wanted to be just like the big trains. But those big trains kept telling him that, oh, you're too small, you can't do that. You can't haul all that cargo. But it came that there was no other engines in the yard one day and this load had to be taken to the other side of wherever but the problem is, is you had to go over this steep hill and Thomas gets to the bottom of that hill and I think most of us know that story it's like oh I can't do that and this other train that comes up whatever I call, I'll call it the grandpa train for, for, the, for all sense purposes says yes you can just tell yourself I think I can I think I can and as that story continues, as Thomas starts to climb the, the tracks and going up that hill, he keeps saying, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, until he gets to the top. And he's just to the top, and he gets a little bit leery that, oh, maybe I can, but I think I can. Gets to the top and then starts going back down. It's like, I know I can. And yes, I can. It's a whole different variety of words. But you can do it. We all can do it. You just need to keep telling yourself, I can. And we all do this through Christ. Right? There is this power in your words. Remember, they can either be harmful, but yet if you choose and select those right impeccable words, they can be the most healing words you have ever said in your life. And let's not about forget about that big one that we saw about don't gossip about others. Oh, God forbid. Oh, boy. You know, I can't tell you. I love church gossip. You know, it's like, oh, did you hear this? Oh, did you hear that? I mean, I just love it when I get these little notes. It's like, oh, I heard about this. What do you know? And like, oh, well, and we won't mention names, but <laughs> previous administration, whatever, it's like, oh, did you see that post on Facebook? <coughs> Where are they going? And quite honestly, I don't know. <laughs> but if you go back to our friends in Proverbs, there's a saying that says, only the senseless belittle their neighbors and discerning persons hold their tongues. Ruiz gives us this analogy of how your brain thinks. And if you've read the book or have the book and have gone through that, your brain thinks like a computer. Okay? And we all know that from time to time that those computers get those good old nasty viruses. So think as gossip as being one of those viruses that have attacked your computer. And just like any other virus, it codes and they have all these codes written in the computer for whatever programs or whatever is in there. I'm not a computer savvy, maybe Jeff can teach me something, but it's all these different things. And, but that virus has codes too. And this particular virus comes into the computer and is harmful and has that harmful intent to your computer. And once that in that virus gets embedded in your computer, it starts to do things just that, that aren't supposed to happen. I always say it kind of has a mind of your own when that virus gets loose in there. Just like us, it's that one little piece of bad data that brings everything crashing down. And just like gossip, that one little piece of bad information that we get and we start spreading around, starts this breakdown. And just like that virus, it becomes infective and contagious 
And imagine that each time someone gossips to you or you gossip to them, you're creating this a virus that is attacking that computer. Now, I'm not saying that we all gossip. I'm not saying we're a congregation that gossips. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we have had our gossip, let me tell you, over the course, at least I know since I've been here, some of it's been good gossip and some of it's been bad gossip. And there is good gossip and there is bad gossip. But stick away from the bad gossip because you know it's just one of those ways of sucking you in into that vortex. You don't need that negativity. You don't need, you know, what's going on. So I will say two things about gossip. There are times when it is an unacceptable conversation and there's other times depending on the nature of it, it's an acceptable conversation. Now hopefully we all know when the unacceptable conversations are, but what is an acceptable conversation? The first w would be the accuracy of that con conversation. If there is the slightest deferral of that truth, then it becomes unacceptable gossip. So get your facts and figures straight, folks. So if you're going to gossip, gossip with the correct facts and figures, though it's not unfactual gossip. But at the same time, my resolution is, is that someone comes up to you and says, oh, I've got something to tell you. I've got this juicy piece of information. My first thing is that, well, hey, that's great. Keep it to yourself. Don't want to hear it. You know, the last thing I want to hear is the church gossip. I hear it whether I want to, but the last thing is you want, you know, it's like, hey, unless it's something good, I don't want to hear it. But that gossip becomes harmful. Now, I will tell you that if it is so-called gossip or whatever, and you want to find out what the truth is, and I think everybody knows the answer of what I'm going to say, go to the source. But go to the source in such a way with your words that are not harmful or intimidating. You know, don't go with it, well, I heard this, and did you know that you're being talked about about this and that? No, what you do do is confront that person and saying, I just want to make sure that everything's okay because there's this information going around, which I don't know is true or not, but I just wanted to find out, is everything okay? And if the gossip is, or the, the word gossip, if the information is true, how can I be of help to you? Or how can I support you in whatever cause it is? Instead of taking that gossip and saying, oh, Gail, did you hear about Corey? And then going to Corey, Corey, did you hear about Dan? You know, and then it sends this chain effect, this domino effect. And the next thing you know, we have one big mess. So if you, if you hear gossip out in the world, go to the source. Find out what it's, what's going on. But be supportive. Be those words that are the powerful words that are tender-hearted and that are impeccable from you. Let those words be powerful each and every day. You've got that power, baby. Use it. So as we heard in Scripture this morning at the end, we heard that, May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart be pleasing ever in your slight. God, who is my rock and my redeemer. So I leave you with this. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but let the words that I speak never be harmful to anyone. Amen? Amen. Amen.